Amen. Amen. Our scriptorial reading of this morning will come from 2 Corinthians 8th chapter, 6th and 7th verse. 2 Corinthians 8th chapter, 6th through 8th verse. Insomuch that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as ye abound in everything in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, the doers of his holy word. to the back of your hymnals, we will be reading number 581, The Lord's Supper, 581. That's the first Sunday of this month, so at 6 o'clock also, we're having a Lord's Supper. So we ask that you come and participate. 
We believe in Jesus Christ. We really appreciate having you. That's 581. If you don't have a, a hymnal with you, you got your Bible or your Bible app, go to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 23 through 34. That's 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 23 through 34. Amen. Everyone have it? Amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do remembrance of me. After the same matter also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And let's read it all together in unison. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I say in order when I come.
chapter 9 and look at verse 6 and 7. Now read that too. But this I say, he mm. which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. All right. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Amen. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. What kind of giver are you? What kind of giver are you? I was telling him, Brother Palmer, man, shot chair one of them, man, said, I don't know. But I went, uh, last Sunday morning uh, and the Lord directed me to this. The church where the Roberts family in Ohio uh, attended didn't have an early worship. It's real convenient for, for Darren because it's right next door to the Cleveland Browns complex. Amen. You can see the steeple from the practice thing. Just, just come out of one to the other. But they didn't have an early worship, and we were needing to be down at the Brown Stadium by noon or before. So I went to a church whom I had misread the day before as our Brother Red and I came to the community. And I thought it said 9.30 worship. When I went by there that morning, it, it actually read 9.30 as their Sunday school, their, 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 as their Sunday school. And it was about a few minutes after 9 then. So I said, well, Lord, you just leave me. So I backtracked some area that we gone on, Sister Roberts and I had gone down, and I passed by this church, and people were driving up, they were coming in. I turned around and went back. And the sight I got, Watson, Palmer, Thornton, Reverend Deloney, I've never seen folk run to go to church. Yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. Am I anywhere? Hey, I, have you ever seen it? I said, well, maybe they all are Cleveland Brown fans. Oh, yeah. Well, the reason they just try to get something. Those folk literally ran, closed the door of the car. 
and got in there, and I thought to myself, that may be what's missing with us. We don't see the stewardship. See, if you make it to Sunday, you ought to be trying to, if, if you make it. If, did y'all hear what I said? If you make it to Sunday. Did, did you hear what Sister Hawkins and Brother Oscar said? And me now I'll just let them say it again. Survivors. Yeah. Why? And I'm not now, I'm not preaching the, this faithless sermon, but it's something that came to my mind because because this is where this is where it all is. That enthusiasm for God is stewardship. It's the stewardship of you. And the rest of it doesn't make any difference. If you haven't stood, if you haven't been become a steward of yourself, the rest is not gonna be there. That's right. That's right. That's right. They are running to get in there. And I got in there. And they, and I'll tell you something else. I bet you they sung about five songs of praise. We stood up all the time. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They had the Lord's Supper. Amen. And they had two big loaves. Yeah, yeah. Real bread. Real bread. Yeah, real bread. <laughs> You went up there and broke it off yourself? Look at that, man. And they weren't looking to see if somebody's hand was clean. <laughs> they, were just, they were just excited. And you know, I, people would be coming in. I'm going to tell you something that stood out of my mind. People would be coming in, preachers. I could tell they were coming in, I could hear them coming in. But you know what? People didn't turn around and look back and see who it was. They were too, they were too concerned about what they're watching. Are y'all with me? Oh, woo, Lord help me. I was so poor, I was so fired when I came out of there. If if Cleveland hadn't won that game, I probably would have I won it for. I'm not, I'm telling you, church. I want us to, to, to really listen. I want us to really understand what you have every day. And stop letting Satan make you look at the negative and the complaining resources and see, Lord, how what you have every day. Every day. I mean, This is the sixth message on stewardship. I'm going to tell you in advance. We're going to go throughout the month. Because the Lord has laid it out. <coughs> and we've e come to this part about the finances part. But, but really and truly, I, I, I have gleaned so much out of this. I, I mean, please, don't, don't leave here after this series not understanding that stewardship takes in the whole world of your belief. Amen. Your whole being is stewardship. Amen. And how you act, how you do with your talents, first of all, how you look at creation, how you use the resources God gives you, how you use your talents, how you use your time, and how you use your monies, and how you just use your watch. Stewardship is the total. Because at the bottom of the line is, we all here for his glory. That's it. We're just here for his glory. If we can see it, if we can see that 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 that, that the birds 
the stars, all the other animals are here for his glory. Why is it so hard for us to see us? Am I anywhere? My soul is on fire. Yeah. 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 Let me reiterate again where I left off the last time, two weeks ago, or the day maybe two weeks. I left off telling you, gave you the four things, I'm not going to ask you if you remember, but gave you the four things of four reasons why God required the tithe in the Old Testament. The first reason was it celebrated the goodness of God. That's Deuteronomy 14 and 26. That when you gave, or when you paid, really, I used to have a problem with that. Paying your tithe. When people, but that's really what it was. The tithe is just like an electric bill. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> yeah, it's due. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you don't even open your mouth talking about offering if you haven't done anything to it for your time. Am I anywhere? It was, in fact, a requirement. So it celebrated God's goodness. Number two, it acknowledged God's ownership of everything. When you get back home, guys, go look at your boat or whatever you got and said, it belonged to God. Pickups or whatever you got, your fishing poles. Later, go look in your jewelry section, look in the, in the closet. That that will work and won't work. All right. Tell it all belongs to God. Amen. This is God. Pull what dollars you got out of your pocket and say, this is God's. And you say, Reverend, you've been telling us this. Yeah, but I want you to be breathe it. I, you, that's, that's, what, that's, that's why God split the time that he did in creation all the way up through the Old Testament was trying to get men to see. They didn't own land. They didn't own their properties. He wanted the Israelites to know and be the example that I own everything, and since I own everything, you need to be glad to use it. Amen. 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 The third reason, it maintained places of worship. That's not all it is. The, the, in the Old Testament time, originally, there was only... The, the temple, the worship place was one place, and that was in the temple at Jerusalem. But it had to be maintained. <coughs> you know? It had, it, had to be, it had to be restored. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. And people come around and want the church to look like this and look like that, and they give a dollar in offering. Say <laughs> God maintained. Did I look at Sister Sister Verma Turner? She's working on, she got the program for our 139th church anniversary. Going, she already got a thing going. And by, by the way, she's going to be, she, uh, unless she may have already called you and said, would you do this and would you do that? I know you're just going to tell her yes because I'm a good steward. <laughs> Will you be the mistress of master self? Yes, yeah, she, she won't even get it out good. <laughs> because I've been hearing what Reverend Robert said, and if we're going to be good stewards, you know, if it's not good for me to do it, why is it good for the next person to do it? Huh? Somebody ought to help me here. Yeah, yeah, so it will. That will be easy, Sister Turner. You just call them and tell them, right? You can do right the service, and they're all. Matter of fact, you may have more names you can do anything with now. It's done. Amen. Thank the Lord. But here 
it maintained places of worship. How in the world am I going to keep our household up and not have resources? That's right. Uh-huh. That's it. Amen. It works at 235 County Road, 416. That's my address. It works at 131 South Otis. Somebody ought to help me. And, 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 and you know what? If if 235 County Road, 416 have primarily two people doing it, and you get a whole church full, somebody ought to help me. Something's wrong somewhere. Something is wrong somewhere. The fourth reason, it cared for a a group of people that God's heart go out toward. It cared for the poor. (laughs) Those four things were accomplished in the time when they they required. But let's go on, and I'm closing for this for, for, for today. The New Testament only once, and I want you to write this down, mention tithing, and Jesus does it in Matthew 23 and 23. Only once. <clears throat> in the context of Jesus calling the Pharisees to something more important. They were strict on giving, doing the tithe, but they weren't strict on love. Amen. They weren't strict on mercy. Yeah. Uh-huh. And what God is saying, good stewardship requires all of this coming as the result of your heart. Yeah. God doesn't want you to give anything out of obligation because it's not a gift then. Yeah. Somebody ought to help me here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He wants you to do it out of your heart, out of the free flow of your heart. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, in the context of Jesus or what Jesus is saying, he was calling the Pharisees' attention to the fact that you may give a tithe of your what comes out of your God, but your heart is hard. Can I get a witness? You're stiff neck. You are you are you you are one of those who are dis are dishonored with one another, unmerciful. Can I get a witness? But then, my brothers and sisters, in the New Testament principle, it's not no, it's not a one tenth thing. No, no. The New Testament principle is just what you read. The second, one example of it is in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. And it's called hilarious giving. Can I get a witness? I'm going to close right there. Yeah, yeah. It's from, it's from the Greek word hilario, from which we get hilarious. But it, it, it's, it, it's best uh, 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 interpretation would probably be, as your text is, cheerful gift. Somebody ought to help me. Now, what the Greek had in mind when they said something was hilario, it meant that there was there was a free spirit. Oh, you ought to hear me. A smile on your face. Can I get a witness? Everything is going good on the inside. And therefore, it manifests itself on the outside. And Paul decided he used that in our giving. He said, look, I, there's no requirement. I'm not making no requirement. I'm not going to stick to no tent. Why, well, that's a requirement. When you do, when you do hilarious or cheerful giving, you just give. Reverend Harris is coming here. Be here tomorrow evening. I'll check in the hotel. Tomorrow evening is about 3 o'clock. I've not told you. I've not asked you for an uh, amount. I've been, if you notice, we very seldom anymore. Ask everybody pay $10. Everybody pay $25. When you got people who understand stewardship, uh-uh. that's, that's not necessary. We're going to, we're going to, if the Lord be our help, we're going to accommodate him here, and we're going to give him compensation. Somebody will say amen. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're going to do it because we're going to give. And I'm hoping and praying that the revival sustains itself. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to be laughing when you come off in time. That's what, that's what they're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That Greek word helio, it meant, oh, whoa, whoa. You, I've been waiting for this. Yeah. I've been waiting to get my word out. Yeah. Yeah. Greek Christians are alive. Lord have mercy. And you know what? You know what? Suppose God turned it around. If 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 if, if, if we talk about the about the tithe, and I don't I, after this I want I don't want us to be focusing on no tithe. I want us to be focusing on offering. And offering is always beyond the tithe. Am I get, am I right? But let's just suppose God turned it around on and said, I'm gonna keep 90. And give you ten. Somebody ought to help me. Yeah, I'm gonna keep ninety. Can I get a witness? And you know what? People say I ain't able. You know why you're not able? It costs of you. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. It, it wasn't Sears' fault. And maybe where it's going, but it's not Sears' fault. You the one went in there. Somebody ought to help me here. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it, it's not Jim Moore's fault. It's not Mason's fault. Come on here. No, 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 no. no. You're the one doing in there. What they give you in Cleveland? I got the When I saw those folk running to go to church. And when it came off for a time, I don't know what they were putting in there, but I can tell you one thing. You didn't see nobody long face. <laughs> they were putting it in an envelope. Can I get a witness? And that particular church, I realized because it says the name of it was Bethel, and Bethel Dash, and it, and it said Middleburg, which is the location, the suburb. But I learned later that there was several several counties. And I said, you know what? They, they didn't get that by folk holding on to that dollar. They didn't get campuses in there. And Sister Robert and I went on Monday out of town and as I passed by the next town, Strongville, Strongsville, there was a Bethel sign up there. Somebody ought to help me here. Wouldn't it be nice if you had four or five MOBC? You got the main campus. Y'all don't hear me. Yeah, you got the main, you got, you got, you got, you got the main campus, and then you have a campus in Pittsburgh, campus in Dangerfield. Y'all don't hear me. And it's not beyond reason. You got to think like God thinks. Stewardship. 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 Yes, sir. Jesus died. He was a steward of his life. Yeah. While I was there, and I, as I was taking my seat, I kept getting telephone calls from home. And I had an aunt to pass while I was there, while we were out of town. I came back here, then after that I had a good friend who grew up together in the community, in those sticks down in Panola County. County. His wife passed. And they were trying to arrange with me to have funerals. And so when I got, when Thursday, we got back here on Tuesday, Tuesday evening, Thursday, I went to Carthage and buried my aunt. Yesterday morning, I went back to Carthage and buried my friend's wife. And I said to myself, you mean to tell me I can't be a student? Hallelujah. You think you got problems? Hey. 
He's blessed us with so much that we have allowed Satan to let him take two or three things and make us close our eyes to the totality of his blessing. Amen. I want to say this. If Jesus would die for, our, for us, sight unseen, can we just open our arms to him? Because I can make you whole. I can feel all the voids. And sister, a heart of stone. Who can He just wants us to be a steward of the blessing that he gives us. And he does a good, a good job. Who can make Lord Jesus a sinner whole? If you're here, who can walk who, who, who? a world that's so cold? Nobody but God. God can. My God can. God can. God can. He can do it. He can do it. to me, God is doing great things among us. It's not about us. It's about him. Thank you for all the new souls you sing our way. Thank you for the revival that's coming. And I will be in the revival and I'm going to tell my friends and, bright, and, and invite them to. Bless you. Go with us, Lord, and keep us. Let us come back this evening and be blessed. Bless the discipleship the meet, that meets this evening also. And then, Lord God, we just, we just praise you for helping open our eyes as to what good stewardship is about. Thank you for these young people. Thank you for these parents. Just, just thank you for each one of them come and dedicate themselves today. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.